This year at Ashley's anniversary sale, we were able to secure a more affordable price on the same great quality as before. And we're passing those savings on to you. Shop new, lower prices on hundreds of items throughout the store and online. Get ready for summer with 10% off on all outdoor furniture. Plus, we're offering five years special financing with no minimum purchase. Visit your local Ashley store or ashley.com to celebrate and save today. Only at Ashley. See store or ashley.com for details. Set sail with Princess Cruises, the original love boat, and fall in love with your vacation like never before. You'll love our friendly crew. You'll love our destinations from Alaska to Europe to the Caribbean. You'll love our world-class dining and entertainment. Most of all, you'll love getting away from it all as you get closer to the ones you love. So come aboard. We're expecting you. Princess Cruises, come feel the love. Contact your travel advisor or visit princess.com today. What up? It's Dramos from the Life as a Gringo podcast. We are back with a brand new season. Now, Life as a Gringo speaks to Latinos who are born or raised here in the States. It's about educating and breaking those generational curses that, man, have been holding us back for far too long. I'm here to discuss the topics that are relevant to all of us and to define what it means to live as our true, authentic self. Listen to Life as a Gringo on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast or wherever you get your podcasts. Brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. When COVID-19 hit, the doors to all independent venues across the country closed and attending live concerts stopped. The independent venues and promoters from every state in the U.S. are banding together to fight for survival. Many of us are at risk of closing our doors forever unless federal assistance is provided. More information is available at SaveOurStages.com. Brought to you by NEBA, a 501c6. You're listening to 100 Words or Less with Ray Harkins. Hello, everybody. Hopefully you like the uh, new little uh, intro that I was uh, trying out at the very top. That way, uh, you know, it sounds like a professional radio show or something like that. (laughs) Anyways, this week is a fun, fun show because we are traveling back in time to 2005. The best of 2005 list that myself, Joey Cahill from 613 on Records, and Jeremy Bohm from Touche Amore, my compatriots throughout every list that we do at the end of the year and then uh we've been doing it uh, gosh maybe the past year or so we kind of you know look back at a previous list that we did that you know we never well podcasting frankly didn't exist back in 2005 you know in in very infant like stages but uh you know we wanted to revisit that list and uh, talk about records and see if they hold up see if they don't hold up that sort of stuff it's a really really fun chat that uh, we have. So it, for, first of all, we have some audio issues throughout. And when I say we, I say me. <laughs> um, you know, so the first maybe 10 minutes or so, um, it, you know, I kind of sound like I normally do on a, a podcast. But uh, then I had some problems with a microphone and then a cord and all of this stuff went wrong. But I did not want to derail the recording of this episode because, you know, people's time is valuable. So uh, you will hear me transition from a, a on the microphone thing to a uh, using the computer audio. It's still 100 percent listenable. Like, you know, I'll be the first person to admit. And frankly, I wouldn't publish it if it was unlistenable. So just know that you will hear a discernible difference between the audio quality on my microphone phone in particular, Joey and Jeremy, they are totally fine throughout this, this episode. Uh, but I just wanted you to know that because, um, you know, sometimes it's annoying when you're just like, Hey, why did that happen? (laughs) And no one says anything at the, uh, the onset of the show, but, um, yeah, that's what we got. And also you heard a, a, uh, pre-roll ad at the very beginning, uh, from save our stages. And it's an incredibly important thing to me. Like I'm not charging them for any sort of advertising on the show. I am running that ad because I obviously really, really believe in um, independent music at large, but then more specifically independent venues. Like that's what I have personally grown up on. And I know many of you have grown up on and with the coronavirus consuming the country in so many different aspects, uh, these venues are at real risk if they are not uh, supplemented by some way, shape or form by the government 
And, uh, you know, frankly, I, I don't have much confidence that the government will step up and do it on their own. They need a loud voice representing them. So uh, I hope that you visit the Save Our Stages website and, uh, you know, support wherever you can, whether it's like, you know, visiting the venue's website and like buying T-shirts, because I know one of the local venues that I visit on a regular basis, Chain Reaction, they've been doing, you know, benefit T-shirts and pins and a bunch of other stuff. So... But anyways, um, that's just something I really wanted to highlight. But uh, yeah, let's dive into the best of 2005 with my friends Joey Cahill and Jeremy Bull. okay? So you, you you had a top twenty five list, Joey? I did. Or I I do. And not a big fan. Not a big fan of where, where we ended up. So you're saying that you would bump some of the lower ones up? Or you would just tr- trash some of the top ten? Both. I would <laughs> I will say right now, if I were to redo this list, my number eighteen would be my number one record. <laughs> Wow. Yo, honestly, mine is very similar. I I guess I have a top 30 because it's split into three different sections. So it's 30 records that I chose as well. But like there's definitely some extreme heaters on the bottom and then records at the top that I'm like, wow. OK, except for one section, which I still stand by and are still my top one and two. But I will also add this is really an I thing to say. Was 2005 the last great year for records because <laughs> I'm looking at this list and I'm shocked at how many great albums there are. I, I feel like I'm not this excited about as many records these days. There, I mean, I'm assuming there's ones I'm missing that I would put on now, but like in my top 25, like there's some, uh, some classics. Well, I think this is a common, I mean, every time we do our best of lists and we always are like, Oh yeah, it was tough getting to 10 records this year. <laughs> And so I think, exactly. right. And so I think like when we, I mean, I like Joey, I have a top 30 and obviously Jeremy, you have a top 30 as well. So like us to be able to go as deep as we did, uh, I don't know, maybe we, cause obviously we just had more time to pay attention to records, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. Well, like 2005, Jeremy, you were at backside still. Yes. Uh, we, you and me were at Abacus. Yep. So like all we did was listen to music. Yeah, it's true. I mean, all day, like pretty much all day long, like. Yeah. And talk about new stuff and show each other new stuff. It was almost like working at a record store minus selling records. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I think there is that. But also, like, when I kind of look through this list, there's a lot of very, like, different sounding stuff where. You know, I feel like it's it's tough to find kind of this, again, I'm sorry for how old this sounds, but like it's hard for me to hear such different sounds these days where it's like hardcore it's kind of a hard thing to reinvent at this point, I feel. And like then come, like like a indie top rock is sort of Yeah. Exactly. Like I, I would have a hard time doing a top ten hardcore for any year of the last like ten. But uh but even like but even like indie rock, like so much of indie rock is very like electronic based, whereas like then there was like a mix of so much stuff, you know, I don't know. I have a hard I have a hard I would have a hard time picking this many records of the last 10 years, you know, I think I would have a hard time doing what you did and like bifurcating the different lists. Like I, I don't. And that's probably why, like, frankly, I never did that. <laughs> I just always was like, oh, yeah, here's this like this stew of records as opposed to, uh, I mean, I think the only differentiation that I ever did. And I mean, I, I looking at my list, I don't, I, I only had like two EPs or whatever that I like threw in to the, you know, honorable I'll mentions or whatever. Yeah. 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 But it's hard. I mean, it's hard when you're, yeah, you're talking about, uh, you know, yeah. These specific genres that, uh, you know, we obviously love, but at the same time, it's like, you know, each year there's probably diminishing returns for us in certain ones, uh, versus other ones where we could maybe do, you know, more records there. But yeah, it's hard. Listening to music is hard, Absolutely. guys. And having an opinion is really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
yeah. I mean, the amount of music I've been yeah. listening to these these days is uh, reminds me back of my youth. Yes. Yeah. I would agree. There's definitely records on here that capture a very specific time and place where it's like, oh yeah, like I haven't listened to that record in a long time. It doesn't mean that's not good. I just haven't listened to that record in forever. There are records on here that I haven't listened to in 15 years. And I will say right now, they're not good. <laughs> well, uh, uh, oh my God. on that note, I want you to start with your number 10, Joey, because I'm very excited about your list now. <laughs> um, number 10 uh, Smoker Fire Above This City, which was that record okay. is fucking great. It's so good. Uh, I'm gonna say this right now. I told you I split up my lists, right? Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, or like I, I, I cherry picked from them. I didn't pick a lot from my punk list. This was my number one punk record. I number one, it's yeah. so good. And I mean, it's one it's of the, like. I need to go back and, and revisit it because it's been a minute, but like, I feel like it holds up pretty well. Yeah, I, I think the downfall of it is that the production is pretty bad, but, but that's the only complaint I have. Like, I remember it feeling very like, I think in the little write up I did, I compared it to like a veil and hot water music or something. But yeah, I guess they said really like good. veil and hot water music. <laughs> So with with the Smoke and Fire record, I think it's also one of those things where there was so many bands that kind of like I was listening to Make Do and Mend because that was on my like honorable mentions list because that or but that was no, that was in 2010. But I was listening to that record. I was like, there's so many bands of that ilk that do the punk pop combo. I mean, pop, I use that term very loosely, but like that verse chorus, like soaring, you know, vocals, like just so, core. Yeah. Beard core. Fest, no, I, fest. Right. Yeah. No idea. Core like smoke and fire could play the fest this year or well, not this year because no one's playing anything, but 2021. Um, As of right now, a fest is still happening. I know, (laughs) but they could play and there's probably like 800 people there. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And and if, if they did a show in LA for some reason of that record, I'd go. Yeah, absolutely. Go. I never, I never saw. I never saw them. I think I saw. Them. I think I, I think I did. I feel like I saw them with a veil. I could be making this up. I definitely saw them. Yeah, but I don't uh, remember when or where. They have a follow-up record that I remember being good, but I didn't. I didn't hold on to it as much as I did this record. I, I, and I, I, no, what were you gonna I, say? I was gonna say I. Last my last trip to Amoeba, uh, I saw it on the wall for like a hundred bucks, and I was like, "Well, good for that little wow. market." Wow, that's awesome. I, I feel yeah. like the follow up was very similar to this record, and and it just kind of was like, "Well, I'm just going to listen to uh, what's it, Above the City because it's better and came first. Yeah, like yeah, I think the second I think the follow up just had a better recording, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now you get to ping pong, Joey. Uh, Jeremy. Okay. So uh, we were saying, I, I don't know if it was recorded. I think it might have been right before we started recording, but like a lot of our list is stuff that you're like, wow, I wish uh, like like some stuff just was in very odd places. But this one feels right for me. Um, and a definite throwback to an era. My number 10, I put Nightmare of You, the self-titled Ooh. record. Remember that? <laughs> Wow, yeah, dude. I feel like they were supposed to be the, the next big thing. Yeah, because the, there was, it's funny too, because I remember getting into it uh, because of, or more, gave it more of a shot because at the time there was a short lived indie rock station in LA. I forget what it was called, like Indie 10 something, um, that would play the single from this record constantly, like genuinely constantly. And I would hear it on my route. Um, when, uh, cause I had, I think by the end of 2005, I was starting to work in post-production. So I remember I was doing a lot of, uh, delivery. So that, that song was always on the radio, which is crazy to me, but for listeners who are unfamiliar, Nightmare of You was the guitar player from the movie Life's like Smithsy Morrissey band that he started, that he, that he fronted. And, uh, it's definitely of the era, but. Um, I'm going to revisit the record because I'll bet it's still got some, some hits on it. Did you guys ever own that record or anything? I had this, I had the CD. I remember liking it, 
but it was just one of those things where like time and place where I haven't, I mean, I feel like they popped up every couple of years to like, Oh, a nightmare views, like reunion in uh, New York. I'm like, Oh, okay. And then that band and then have just moved on. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I, 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 I never. Yeah, I never messed hard with it. But it was one of those things where it was just because of the you know Long Island connection. You're just like, oh yeah, this is cool. They're doing something different, uh, you know, rather than just like you know another rehash version of the movie life or uh, you know because wait, like, I and the Avalanche was around then, I think too. But it was good. I remember that. I, was it on a major? That, that's what I can't remember. <sighs> I feel on like one of those weird like. Management company yeah. record labels. Yeah. yeah. That, like, I'm looking it up. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, all, all, all of us were very aware of that at that time. It was on the Bevanshire label and East West. Oh, oh so- East West. Because East West had all those, like, like vanity labels yeah. at the time. And they were kind of like, yeah. Because I wasn't that what... Oh, man. I mean, there was a lot of people that were, like... And was on East West at some point. Yeah. And I want to say, didn't Recover get... I mean, I know Recover was on Fiddler and Fueled by Ramen initially, but, like, I I thought that they did... They signed to a major. They had a full on a major. Yeah, that's right. East West for Recover. East West was owned by Atlantic. Um, And it looks like Bevanshire was, like, a... uh, uh, their own label. So it's probably, like, a... Major label slash upstream deal of their own thing. I I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but it was definitely a. But yeah, I mean that band definitely had their had a moment because of you know like had automatic walk so uh, so nightmare <laughs> of you could run. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, yeah. You you got to dip into that major label cash because they didn't know what they were doing at that time. They're like, uh, I guess this whole indie thing. Like we need more bands that are affiliated with this whole Long Island scene. Who else is there? Yeah. All right, well, Ray, what's your uh, number 10? My number 10 is uh, Pelican. The fire in our throats will beckon the thaw, uh, which I have legitimately not listened to in probably 15 years. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I literally have nothing to say about the record. <laughs> like, I mean, it's good. I, rem- I remember. Where did this come in their catalog? This was their, I want to say this was their actual first full length, if I'm not mistaken. Um because, oh, you know, this was after Australasia, so it's their second full length, I think. Um, okay. Yeah, it's like the blue cover one with like, you know, look like whatever, ice, ice something, you know, icebergs or whatever. Um, but yeah, and I, I mean, I just was obsessed with Pelican from basically the moment that I saw them open for uh, Isis at Spaceland. I was just like, hey, can this band put out a song every day? Because I'll listen to it. I'll listen to a seven minute riff. <laughs> riff into oblivion and um yeah that's why pelican is on my list did you go to the pelican curse i think it was pelican cursed at coos in long beach yeah for sure sounded terrible wait what it wasn't cursed pelican no, no. no. But, was not yeah not Bro- cursed breathe resist yeah, yeah yeah that's what it was no because it was cursed breathe resist uh was, pelican played maybe the, it the, was the roof. And I wouldn't have gone just to see Pelican there. Hmm. I can't remember. I don't know. Yeah. It was a very long time ago. It was a very long time. <laughs> throw, throw out a, a band that I wouldn't care about, and I'll just say, yeah, that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I definitely was there for Breathe Resist and Cursed. So all right, all right. I'm just trying to think of another. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, remember, when, remember when I don't know. Remember when Breathe In played as a Hawaiian band? I remember when they played. Yeah. I <laughs> towards the end like i just remember i saw them at coos when they were shifted over to the hawaiian aesthetic yeah, and the sound. piece yeah but they're still called they were on the flyers breathe in so it was like hmm this is curious what's happening what a record oh uh, yeah yeah i missed and, that one anyways yeah well he didn't miss much because <laughs> they didn't play anything off of their bridge nine stuff uh anyways number number nine i'll do uh i this you do number 10 oh you did number 10 i yeah. did number 10 yeah oh. uh number nine will be a very specific thing uh cartel chroma which you know is still a good record i i stand by that <laughs> my number my number 15 number 15 okay um yeah, yeah. Is this the one is this the one they recorded in the boat in the dr pepper bubble pre 
This was pre pre ah. banned in the bubble. Yeah, that record's okay. great. It's just, I mean, I, I think I said I was like, it gives me the same feeling as listening to uh, Static Prevails, which you know is a pretty, you know, a lot of hyperbole there. Yeah, but you know that's what that's what you did with these write ups. You really like went long on them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so to, so to compare culture, Cartel Chroma to uh, Static Prevails, you're like, yeah, that's a that's a tall. I have a, a very weird or unfortunate connection. Not unfortunate, un, like with this record where. When I, I'm in an older car, when I'd hook up my phone to it, it would just play the the first song like alphabetically, and it was they have a song called just the A. Yep, it's like twelve so, minutes long, and it, but it starts like pretty jarringly. So I would just like start my car, plug in my phone, not really think about it, and just like boong. Yep, same every single time, and it just drove me nuts. The yep. uh, the song because I, I still I still use an iPod. I the song that does that for my car is A-list actress from uh, Hey Mercedes. <laughs> I, I can live the rest of my life without hearing that intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, that is an unfortunate thing when, when you're, when a song gets uh, unintentionally played, when you plug in your uh, iPhone or uh, iPod or whatever, it's like, yep, you just end up hating or that record. Turn, turn your car on and all there, there it is. Yep. Uh, yep. So yeah, Cartel Chroma. But my, uh, I will toss it to uh, you, Jeremy. What's your number nine? Rockabilia.com. You know what to do, right? Well, if you don't, band merch is incredibly important. And getting stuff shipped to your house now is even more important. So how about you combine both of those things and you go to Rockabilia.com and use the code PC100Words. That is an incredibly important code for you to use because it gets you 15% off. They sell all officially licensed band merch from pretty much every band you can possibly imagine. They sell puzzles. They've got awesome stuff for summer, you know, tank tops. Get yourself, uh, you know, as you're doing your your socially distanced hikes or your socially distant pool time, please do that. And it's rad because all of the bands get paid royalties on these officially licensed garments. When you just randomly Google a band name and band merch, you sometimes will see some pretty horrific bootlegs that exist out there, whether it's on Amazon, whether it's on eBay, whatever the case may be, that is not what you need to do. You need to go to rockabilly.com, buy the real deal, independently run company, ships out of the Midwest, amazing customer service. I can't tell you enough about how much this company means to me and means to the music universe at large. So rockabilly.com, use the code PC100words, 15% off your order. It's a record that should be much higher. <laughs> um, this on my uh, on, on my top ten indie. This was still number nine, and it's insane to me. Uh, Death Cab for Cutie plans. It's pretty. It's, it should be much higher. <laughs> um, my number nine as well. Oh, nice! Is it? <laughs> Way to go! <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but again, well, it, we, like, why is it just so dual? Low? Yeah. We can just dual talk about it. Um, it's a bold claim, and I'm sure someone's going to be mad at me for saying this, but this is the last Death Cab, for Re- Death Cab record I actually care about. Um, Listen to the I think I think they have... No, they have songs on all their... Like, I've, I've continued to purchase all their records, and I listened to all their records, but this is the last one that actually had, like, an emotional impact on me that I was, like, obsessed with. So I... And this might yeah. make people mad. I think this is the best Death Cab record. I think it is the eat like okay. transatlanticism is like the go to, and it's maybe equal or better. I don't know. I go back and forth, but this is just such an easier listen, like that I can put on plans, and it's like it's just essentially just a bunch of like poppy songs, and then it's like oh cool, like that was great. Tran- whereas transatlanticism, there's a lot of songs you kind of have to work for to like or pay attention to. There's just so much going on. That I almost like. Yeah, I would. Them as like, I would agree. It's like one A and one B almost. The the this is my number two record, so we'll obviously you know I'll I'll just dive in with you guys. Uh, it to me it's the easiest to listen to Death Cab record. Like the flow of it is perfect. The emotional resonance is what you were talking about, Jeremy. Is just it's so good. Like Summer Skin. Like you cannot get. It's just beautiful. You listen to it and it like puts you in in that play. Like you're on a swing in a park, just like just it's beautiful. And so even, yeah, even like I will follow you into the dark, which has like obviously been played out. You know, we've all heard it a million times. Like you still put it on. You're like this song's great. Yeah. Like 
it's just a great song. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's what a record. It's a good one. It's definitely a good one. Well, shit. What do we do now? You just did your number nine as well. Yeah. Can we so go back to Ray for number eight, or what do we do? Sure. Do we'll that. do. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, my number eight is uh, Psyche Rose Tack or Talk Talk. I'm not exactly sure. I I don't speak Icelandic. Um, I how oh, that's not on my list at all. That's a that should be on my list, but it's not. Yeah, great record. It it like. I just, I, it was funny too, because we were, you know, we were talking about, you know, doing 2010 as well. And I had a Jonesy record on my 2010. So I was listening to that. And it's just like the moment that you step into, a, you know, his vocals over atmospheric music that is just like so cinematic and beautiful. It just, it just elevates you. It takes you to a different place. And yeah, this record is so like, I mean, this was definitely the, <laughs> I love I, I call this record like their most aggressive record, which of course for Psyche Rose is a joke, like they're not aggressive. But uh yeah, it's just so beautiful. And this 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 record in particular um just cemented them as like a you know, whatever top twenty band for me of all time. Beautiful stuff. I really nothing to them. Yeah, I think it might have been late. Sorry, babe. You guys there? Yeah, you, yeah, it's okay. You were pausing for a sec. You got late. You were late to them. Uh, uh, yeah, I was. I was weirdly late to them. Like I think I always appreciated what I heard, but I never bought a record until this one. So I might have. I might have got it like a year later or something like that. But yeah, it's the record's incredible. It's I've, absolutely incredible. A few years back, I bought a couple records, being like, "All right, this is the band I should get into." Bottom. Listened to them, had them for a while, and was like, nope, don't need these, and they're gone. <laughs> oh, <laughs> heartbreaking. You should, it, you, you should, there, they released a tour DVD of a tour they did of Iceland called, like, it's like Hemina or something. It's like H E M I A. It is quite possibly the best band DVD, with the exception of Strife's One Truth of all time or the, about, the Earth Crisis DVD. <laughs> I was about to say the Earth Crisis DVD. Hold on. Um, <laughs> But yeah, they do an awesome tour of their entire country playing in front of, you know, whatever, millions of people or what the whole island uh, of Iceland in Reykjavik. But then they also play like super small fishing towns. And it's amazing because they're just like, I mean, they're like folk heroes there. And so watching yeah. the, and then plus they also showcase the country in like the most beautiful way. So, yeah, I would recommend that because that that really like yeah. people that are just like whatever on, you know, the music, like when you kind of watch that in context, it's like, Oh my gosh, like these, these guys are important. So anyways, uh, number eight, I, I will give it to you, Joey. What's your number eight? Uh, Lydia this December it's one more and I'm free. Holy moly, dude. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't, I can't I say I, I can't say I, I like that. that is. Female fronted band from Arizona, right? Yep. Yep. It's still no. It's still okay. I. Yeah, I don't really have anything to say. Like there's the I literally, you know, it's been. <laughs> they still don't they? They put out a record like a couple of years ago. Oh, I want to say they kind of got like this weird cult following, and were like pretty are pretty popular. I think they might have broke up. I don't really know. I do know. I tried to sign them to Abacus. Yes, that didn't work. Uh, no, no. Didn't. They, I think they, uh, I can't remember who they ended up putting out a record with. Like they put out a record with like, didn't they get signed to a major, I want to say like BMG or, I don't know, whatever, but. They think they did a bunch of like, I don't think they ever, I think they like not self-released, but. Yeah. They, they were like a weird band. I don't know. Yeah. They're like, they're like one of those bands, like, uh, you know, uh, the deer hunter or whatever, where it's like, they build this own cottage industry around the band where people like the whatever, 100 and 200, how many ever people pay attention to them are like devotees of them. Like, you know, like what are like Isley or whatever. Like, it was like RX bandits. Yeah. I love that band. And it's like, not for me, deer hunter, not for me, but there's people who are obsessed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what, yeah, that record. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Huh. Took, took us <laughs> back, Joey. <laughs> yeah. We'll keep going. <laughs> Jeremy. I have a record that I, I'll be honest, I don't really throw on anymore, but I, there's certain records that I, I put into it, the same category. Um, 
of things that I just like I listen to too many times and I just feel like I've had it like like I like I, I crave listening to it but it's minus the bear menace number number five for me jeremy number five yeah uh, yeah that, like number 20 <laughs> so like that record was like the postal service or like fucking napoleon dynamite and garden state like all that shit was all like like stuff that everyone was just so obsessed with and overexposed to that like I mean, that's all. I I think that's probably the fan favorite, and I know it's certainly the record that got the most attention at the time. Um, and I think it's a great record, but I just I think I've just heard it too many times that I don't find myself like looking to throw it on. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. What's funny is like I have that record on there, and I I don't know when I've if I. I guess the last time I listened to it was 2005 because like, if I'm going to listen to minus the bear, I'm going to put on highly refined pirates. Like, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Like that. I mean, I think for, yeah, for me, minus the bear, like I still, when it comes on any sort of random shuffle or whatever, I get, I'm, I get excited. And then like, maybe I pull an LP out and listen to, and then a- anyone that I pull, you know, from planet ice to whatever it's, it's like, Oh yeah, this is a, a very pleasant experience. Um, and I, I think the thing that this band falls victim to is that it's, uh, you know, it's so good, but it also like doesn't leave that much of a like lasting impression on you in the way that like you just become like rabid. Like even though like the first day, the first EP um, and the, you know, the highly refined pirates, like, I mean, I probably saw them like, I don't know, seven or eight times on those records, like uh, uh, collectively I was obsessed with them, but then it just gets to a point where you're just like, okay, cool. Moving on. And like, it's not because like they did anything wrong. <laughs> but they also another yeah. band like like I mean they just they broke up what last year. And it's like, they, like were, they just kept getting bigger. I mean, I think they plateaued I'm sure they plateaued at some point, but like they were really popular and it's just like I just kind of fell off. Yeah. And it's like I actually mentioned in my little write up that or I, I was saying that I think they're on to quote unquote major things next year. Cause I think I remember the rumor was that they were going to sign to a major and that, you know, they were going to be whatever, something huge after that. But yeah, obviously it did not happen. Where did they, did they go to, were they just on poly? Where are they polyvinyl? No. They, oh man. They were on suicide squeeze forever, yeah, but they went somewhere bigger. Didn't they? They had to have. I, yeah, <laughs> they had to have. Uh, I know that they did. Uh, oh, they did Danger Bird, right? Danger Bird. Yeah, yeah. Danger they're, Bird. Yep, they were on Danger Bird for a while. They did two records on Danger Bird. Yeah, yeah. I guess they were on Squeeze. Four of their six LPs were on Suicide Squeeze. Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good Dang. for them. And uh, and and Nick Nick Steinhardt. He did the, the last record. There you go. Beautiful stuff. Yeah. That was your number um, eight, Jeremy. That was my number. Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. what do I do? I think you're. You can do your number seven. Okay, number seven. Another record that I find myself listening to a lot more than a lot of other things that were on uh, my list. But um, Alkaline Trio, Crimson. Ooh. Did not make my top twenty-five. <laughs> oh my god! You? That's a heart attack. Why? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. In 2005, I did not like Crimson. I whoa! I think yeah. we used to fight about it because yeah. I wrote for it. It would be right on if if we were to redo the list. That would probably be my number two record. <laughs> Jeez, man! I, I like it how it literally doesn't even make the list and it gets skyrocketed up to your number I, two. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna redo my list when this is over. Yeah. How do you, yeah. where, where do you even begin with that? Oh, well, I mean, I guess you begin like obviously using well, art lists as comparison, like, but yeah, yeah. I'm looking at this now and it's like, I stand by my top five and they would probably make my top 10, but like plans would be in somewhere in the top five. My number one was my number 18 and Crimson would be my number two. Yeah. Yeah. What they're a crit. Joey, I remember I was fighting with you over the song Sadie, which oh, I'm sure you still, still are not a fan of. Yeah, the song sucks. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> that is my least favorite album uh, besides everything on this addiction. 
I am very excited to tell you about a new record from Crow Mags, released this June 19th on Mission 2 Entertainment. And I mean, if you don't know who the Crow Mags are, I, I really think you need to uh, get out a little bit more because, uh, you know, they are hardcore legends. It's their first album in 20 years. It's called In the Beginning. And uh, it's a really, really good record. We're going to listen to a little bit of one of their tracks. It's called From the Grave. It actually features Phil Campbell from Motorhead on it, which is unbelievable. So let's listen to a little bit of that, and then I'll tell you a little bit more. So how about that? I, I really can't believe we're talking about a new Chromax record now in 2020. It's unbelievable. So you can find that record called In the Beginning on any of your favorite streaming providers, or you can go to mission2entertainment.com and find some uh, some cool packages in regards to merch and vinyl and all the other fun stuff. So yes, go check out the new Chromax record called In the Beginning Everywhere Out Now. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I myself am a huge advocate for therapy, and I think that most people would benefit from it. Because, you know, life just really gets in the way sometimes. Whether it's a relationship issue, a family issue, a work issue, you feel overwhelmed. You don't know where to turn to. You're like, I can't bug my family and friends about this. Like, maybe I'll be able to, you know, just push through it on my own. You do not need to be alone in this journey. And that is why BetterHelp is such a cool option. They are convenient because it's flexible, affordable, and entirely online. And all you do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. I love what they do and I would really, really encourage you trying therapy for the first time. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can absolutely help get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash Ray to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp.com slash Ray. Try therapy and trust me, it will make your life better. Do you like online casinos? Maybe you feel like if you've played one, you've played them all. That may be true until now. Welcome to Playstar Online Casino, where you are the star of the show. I'll be your personal concierge guiding you to the games you love to play. We have the best slot games around, like Cleopatra and Starburst, plus live blackjack, roulette, and so much more. To get started, sign up for an account, and we'll match your first deposit with up to $500 bonus and 500 free spins. And as your personal concierge, you can count on me to bring you tailored promotions, special offers, and exclusive rewards that you won't find anywhere else. So sign up for an account, and we'll take care of the rest. Head on over to Playstar.com now and experience the most unique online casino in New Jersey at Playstar.com. Terms and conditions apply. You must be 21 or older within the state of New Jersey to play. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. This year at Ashley's anniversary sale, we were able to secure a more affordable price on the same great quality as before. And we're passing those savings on to you. Shop new, lower prices on hundreds of items throughout the store and online. Get ready for summer with 10% off on all outdoor furniture. Plus, we're offering five years special financing with no minimum purchase. Visit your local Ashley store or ashley.com to celebrate and save today. Only at Ashley. See store or ashley.com for details. This was my last, up until this newest record from them, which I remember I, when I had on my list a couple years ago or last year or whatever, uh, this was my last favorite Alkaline Trio record. And then that newest one came out. And it's like, I think their second best record, like the next best record in line. But um, yeah, I, I write hard for Crimson. A lot, lot of heat, a lot of heaters on this record. It's incredible. It's a great but side note, yeah. should, the major label record should you should give it more attention because it's great. But Agony and Irony? Yeah, it's so good. It's very good. Uh, it's, I agree. See, okay, this is where this is where you and I have this in common because that has my least favorite Alkaline Trio song of all time, which is that Kiss Kiss Love Love song oh, or whatever oh, the hell. Yeah, not good. Disposable. 
It's a but terrible it's, song. But it also has secretly and, like and a top five that song. One. That that song over and out is absolutely perfect. I remember. What, song. I remember that when they good. came out with that EP. Did they, didn't they come out with that EP that had like the Joy Division rip uh, of it before? Uh, I mean, when I say rip, like the design, the cover, and then I just remember those three songs. Uh, I, but I think, I think this. I don't know. I just remember that EP coming out before as like a teaser and it was just like, whoa, this is real good. It was, I think my issue with it is that it's so produced. It sounds, I mean, it sounds like, I think Jerry Finn did it, but it sounds like uh, the dude from Goldfinger did it. Whose name? John Feldman. John Feldman. Like it's yeah. so per- like, I mean, it sounds like it was made by machines. It's, um, yeah. Like, it's perfect in the most like yeah. sterile of ways. Um, but it's like I listen to it now, and it's—I mean, it's—it's it's probably my th- fourth favorite Alkaline Trio record. But that, I mean, in it was like my least. I mean, I guess by then it was like their fifth record, so it didn't really. Or fourth record, so it didn't count. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. It's a good one. It it's real. Um, yeah. Well, Joey, what's your uh, what's your number seven? All American Rejects. Move along. <laughs> That, I, that that was on my list, but that was definitely like I want to say in the mid twenties. Yeah, it's it's still pretty good. It's a good pop record. I haven't listened to it in probably since two thousand five. So uh, I mean, obviously, all of us have heard the uh, you know move along. For, <laughs> yeah, a billion times in every store that we walk into. I don't, I don't hate that song. That's a good song. Yeah, but, uh, but again, I like, also don't. Would it be my number seven record today? No, no. Now, actually, uh, looking back, that did not that did not make my list. Yeah, so sorry, Joey, I don't agree with you. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Uh, all American rejects and cartel take take it take a long drive somewhere else. (laughs) Joey, Joey, and I just leaning into our pop love. It's like, hey, can you can you have some pretty boys singing at us? Sure, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, my number, uh, my, my number, oh. yeah, my number seven is uh, Propagandi's Potemkin City Limits because it's Propagandi. And that, I mean, I, 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 yeah, there's nothing that they can do that is wrong in my eyes. Like maybe some records are a little bit longer, a little bit thrashier, but this, I think this record was the last record that I, uh, similar to what Jeremy was talking about with uh, Death Cab for Cutie, as far as like the emotional resonance, I think this was the, f- the last Propagandi record that like emotionally resonated with me. I enjoyed everything they've done since, but this one is still like, it, it lodges, it, it lodges in my heart in the same way that, you know, today's empires and how to clean everything and everything they've done before that. This was my number 13 record. And I feel like I need to go back and listen to it because for I've, as I've, as I've matured, uh, my, my time with propaganda has now ended with, uh, today's empires, tomorrow's ashes, tomorrow's empire. What's yeah. Whatever. T- today's empires, tomorrow's ashes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. like for me, like that's the last record. If I'm going to listen to propaganda, I'll stop after that record. Sure. You can, I, you, yeah, you can extend this a little bit like the failed States or whatever. That was definitely the record where I was like, mm, okay, all right. Got it. Yeah. I just, I, I yeah, don't, it was in my, I don't remember what that record sounds like at all, but it made my list. So, Hey, kudos to you, propaganda. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, well, my number four on my list. Yeah. While in quarantine, I, uh, just listened to, I've like, you know, I listen to a lot of records while doing puzzles. And one of the records I've been repeating a lot is less talk, more rock. And it is just oh. perfect. Absolutely perfect. It's like, it's, it, it offends me that that record came out so long ago. Cause like you could put it out today and it does not, it loses zero emotional impact, like yep. zero relevance. Like it's like, Oh yeah, this is just of the moment. And like, how can you do that when that, I mean, remember it came out what? 97, 96. I think it was 96. Like that, yeah. And that's just that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's why that band's perfect. Anyways, uh, number seven. Uh, let's go. Let's give it to you, Joey. What's you got for number seven? Number six. Oh. Or no? Wait, did I? Oh, you did. You guys did your number sevens. Yeah. Okay, I'll do number. Yeah. I'll do my number six. It's thrice Fahisu. 
uh, that was the record that everyone started to hate thrice as far as like, oh, this doesn't sound like artists in the ambulance. So now I'm not going to care about them anymore. Um, obviously, they're still incredibly popular and people have now revisited the record. I think they canceled their Vahisu tour this year. Um, but yeah, the record. They, they, they oh, yeah, that's right. That I was, was, and I went to the Boston show. There you go. Or Worcester, excuse me. I went because I like, because uh, Drug Church played. And yeah. Without you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, um, but yeah, the record. It, it, I mean, it's super weird. It's uh, it has all of the the hintings of where they would be going in the future, as far as like those elemental EPs and stuff like that. But yeah, the record. I mean, I I still listen to this on a you know not regular basis, but uh, it's for sure in the rotation. I I will spoil it and say this is my number one. 2005 there you go throwing heat wouldn't be my number one today nothing against this record i love this record and it would definitely make my top 10 but uh yeah yeah you gotta 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 shuffle some things around um did not make any of my lists not even honorable mention not anything i was you 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 two rode the thrice train real hard uh i know it's probably amplified by friendships and tours together and whatever that always like helps like you really want to drive for a band and and i get it um yeah like i think the only record i ever owned from them was that what was this uh, illusion of safety is that the second one artist in the ambulance artist in the ambulance was the big one but yeah illusion of safety that was the hopeless one this there was was identity crisis illusion of safety artist in the ambulance yeah so the second one, I own that one. Um, I feel like you but, would. Enjoy uh, some, I feel like you would like Beggars. I feel like that's a record you would enjoy. Yep, that's when they got even weirder. That was one of the newer. That was like. That's one of the newer ones. That was their first on Vagrant, I think. No, the EPs uh, were on Vagrant. Right. Oh, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I guess first full length on on Vagrant, but yeah, they just got like more, lack of a better term, like I don't know, earthy. <laughs> Like just got got into their folk side of things, but um, still had you know the. But there was like electronic elements and. Yep, exactly. Uh, I think that's secretly the best thrice record. Yeah, as far uh, I mean, as far as their uh, like them showing their ambitions even further than what they had already done. Yeah, I would agree with you, Joey. Um, okay, that was my six. Uh, Jeremy, what do you got for number six? Uh. Renee Hartfelt, Death of a Ghost. That'll be that is my number five, so I'll I'll join you. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a hot, hot record of band that needs much more attention. Um yeah, I think I think I think it was a very small fan base that included the three of us being some of their biggest cheerleaders. I remember, but, uh, see, I remember yeah, seeing them at Studio S. Like not to interrupt yeah. your train of thought, but it's like, yeah, I, I really yeah. legitimately think there was like eight people there, and it was just like we were like, oh yeah, you guys can play for four hours, that's fine. I saw well, them. At, I, remember. I, like, I saw them at the, t- the tiny room at the Knitting Factory. I I, well, it's funny, Joey. You weren't in at Studio S too. I've been to Studio. I went to Studio S once, and it was for Turmoil. That's the only time I ever went there. <laughs> <laughs> that place was the worst but uh definitely it's funny because i always when i when i talk about uh that renee hartfeld showed studio s i always say like i could i knew everyone in the room's first and last name <laughs> like, yeah. I was just like oh there's uh i know greg bacon was there um Why but I, the show was crazy. that's weird yeah that is weird because it feels yeah, the, sh- the Go ahead, Jeremy. Sorry. Uh, the lineup was insane because it was Renee Hartfelt, Backstabber Zinc, and The Adored. That was the show. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, time, what, a, what a time and place. But that record is perfect. And for people who've never heard it before, it's like very, it was like they were kind of the first pioneers of the 90s, like grow back before that became like a sound that was common like literally 10 years later with a lot of like the run for cover stuff this band was way ahead of the time recapturing and kind of like the quick sandy uh it's hum sort of failure and, uh, 
So yeah, check out this record. It's it it deserves something. Is there any move? What's going on with, with? Can we talk about this, for Joey? What's going on? With this? Yeah. Um, we well, we were hoping it was gonna. We were we were like, oh, maybe we'll do record store day, and then record store day sucks. Sorry. Uh, so now we're just we have we're just waiting on the artwork. We're supposed to do the artwork. It's re- hey, so, what? Yeah, six month through. Yeah, six we're gonna, gonna reissue it. You we didn't say that. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're get, but we're reissuing everything. Um, okay. Like a double LP with the seven inch, the LP, some unreleased stuff, including uh, the, memori- the memorial stuff, right? <laughs> that's run for cover. I know. I'm uh, but we've got a we've got a world's fastest car cover on it. Um, but we just yeah, maybe this year. Who knows? <laughs> At some point, it's coming. Okay. I, yeah. Randomly, like. People will post something about running a heartfelt, and they'll be like, "Oh, this. Hope this gets on vinyl." And I'll like makes like, "Oh, soon," and I'll always get like three or four people message yeah. me, like, "Oh, really?" So I feel like there's, yeah, there's, there, it's there's a lot of yeah. like people, people who knew this band love this band. Yeah, totally. Well, it, and it's one of those things too. Anytime I have ever showed it to somebody or like put it on a mix or anything like that. It, it is undeniable. Like it's a hundred percent approval rate. You know, people listen to it. They're like, what is this? Wait, who is this? And yeah, it's just flawless. I agree. It did not make my top 10, but that it was, I think I put it, I think it was the number 14. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What a band. Cool. Uh, then I get so lost with this stuff. I think where, my, where am I going? Yes. Joey's number six. Uh, okay. All right. Six. Final fight under attack. <laughs> wow. Another band I tried to sign to Abacus. Uh, I haven't listened to this record in a very long time. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't recall. I mean, this, but, they had a lot of, didn't they have a lot of, of melody in this one? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah, it's super, just, I mean, like, melodic hardcore, like, to a T, you know, like, they were, pr- I feel like they were, pretty massive for like at chain reaction and the south bay and that's it <laughs> but like their shows were pretty nuts like you know good sing-alongs and and you know whatnot but you could i don't have, know you, you could have seen them doing something like i if i remember it correctly it was like the 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 notion was that like oh they could probably do what like set your goals were, were attempting to do at that time as far yeah. as like popularity is concerned and then they yeah, they signed a Death Wish. They did a split with, was it Lifelong Tragedy or Killing the Dream? Uh, Lifelong Tragedy. Lifelong Tragedy. And then I think they, them and Death Wish parted ways, I think, before. I, I think and someone else put out an LP. Uh, uh, yeah, the bass player talked shit on somebody on uh, the Bridge Nine board and they got dropped. <laughs> That's right. That'll do, That'll do it. That's the internet That'll drama. <laughs> um, yeah. I haven't thought about this band in a long time. And I saw that on the list and I was like, huh, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. Not much to say about I that. I went and had, I went over to one of their, one of their houses to like have a meeting about Abacus. And that's, yeah. Bought a pizza. Yeah. I forget what was this, what was, what was the singer's name? He was always a really nice guy. He was very nice. Uh, Oh, Why would I still have his number in my phone? <laughs> I have, I mean, I don't delete anyone's numbers. Wow. Uh, yeah. No, I don't think I do. Yeah, I can't remember uh, his name either. Yeah. I put in. He was always oh, real nice. He was very nice. Um. God, that is, I'm, I'm having to like dig through. Uh... <laughs> Damn it, what? No members included in in uh, in the the discogs page. For the, um, yeah, that, well, this this band was definitely lost to time. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah. There you go. What's your no, note? What's your what's your number five? My number five was Renee Hartfelt. Oh okay. Uh, so oh, they were on Straight On Records. Yeah, oh yes, Derek. That's... Yep, that was their first full length. Yep. Yep. Shots fired or something like that. I can't remember. 
<laughs> right. What is your number? My number five was uh, the minus bear, minus the bear Meadow Settle also. Oh. So do you have something different, Jeremy, for number five? I sure do. A record that I was shocked at how low it was, considering uh, what what is above it uh, in this genre. Um, but Bright Eyes, I'm wide awake. It's morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. My number eighteen, like without a question, <laughs> would be my number one record. Like, what was I thinking? Yeah. Hey man, there's obviously yeah. better records that came out that year for you. <laughs> I'm just blown away by. It. It's my number three in my country records that are above it. I still like, but I know for a goddamn fact that I listen to that Bright Eyes record way more than I do those other ones, you know? I listen to Plans and Bright Eyes and even Crimson more than any of my top ten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's not much to say about this Bright Eyes record other than it's just flawless, but, and it's just so significant still um so yeah it's my number five and sorry it should be higher <laughs> it's your it's your number five revised to your number one <laughs> yeah well no actually i'm still standing by my number one and two actually oh that's but right this that's would right. Be my number th- yeah okay but it's, it's tough it's tough what are your number one and two then i am so con- so curious no okay i know it definitely one of them is I think uh, yeah, I think I may yeah, know what one of them is. Okay, well, do do your number four, and then we'll see. Uh, we'll we'll continue on this journey. Okay. Uh, my number four was the one that was. So my number four and my number three are my number one and two for my indie rock list. So uh, number four is Kevin Devine, "Split the Country, Split the Street," which I love. I think it's a great fucking record. I absolutely love this Kevin Devine record. Um, but I do. Love Bright Eyes more. It's it's just it's just crazy, you know. Yeah. But uh, I've always been a huge huge Kevin Devine fan. Um, I follow his career for since Miracle of '86, and uh, this is I think his first like incredible solo record. I like the ones before it, but this was the first record that was like he's on some shit now. So yeah, there you go, Kevin Devine, split the country. Nice. I think. Hold on, I'm lost track of where i am is that yeah that's the one record i own um, okay and i like it it's really good it's really, yo joey and i i there's so many things to listen to but if you if i would highly recommend checking out his his major label record what your ghost to rest what's funny is i i hopefully he's not listening but uh, i had that record i listened to it and i i couldn't get into it it's wow. I, if I was just like, I felt a lot of like, like the same tempo kind of just, the, the, I don't know. It just didn't huh. do it. It didn't, it didn't click with me. Okay. I re- give it a shot with, 20, give it a shot with 20, 20 years. No, I did. This was, this was like two months ago oh. or a month ago. Cause. Oh, well fuck me then. <laughs> You're like that didn't change anything. <laughs> I'll try <laughs> 2021 again. No, okay. I recently tried to okay. get into Maybe it. That, that's the year. Okay. Um, well, who, who, Ray, you're number four? Yeah, I'll do number four. And this uh, is very similar to my Pelican pick. Uh, Red Sparrows at the Soundless Dawn. This was another band that I could not get enough of. I could not see more. I probably saw them, I mean, at, at least 10 times in a year. Like just every time they played LA, it's like, no problem. I'm there. Front row. Um, and they definitely like, they just continue to put out music. I mean, it feels like they've got like at least 15 full lengths. <laughs> I don't know. They just, they kept putting out music for so long. And I think I just got really worn out by it. Um, but I mean, it, it I, I listened to a couple of songs off it today and I was like this or not like one song off of it. And I was like, it, it, this is so good. I just would never, there's so much that I like now that is similar to it that I would put on before this. I think I, sure. I think he played with. I think I, I only saw him a couple times, but I think it, they might have played with Dillinger at the El Rey. Yeah, that's how, that sounds I think right. I bought some random like numbered like some CD they were selling of. I don't, yeah, they did. They, they did so many of those. I mean, that was when the you know a Hydra head affiliated bands would do like the most limited, coolest things possible, and everyone was like, "Oh my gosh, I can't get enough of it." 
I can turn this on eBay or whatever. And so, yeah, the Red Sparrows was definitely one of those bands that, uh, yeah, they were just really good at what they did and had limited stuff. And I haven't listened to them since. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, up until, uh, you know, a couple hours ago, I definitely hadn't checked them out <laughs> in quite some time myself as well. Uh, what's your number four, Joey? Uh, a record I'm assuming we'll hear about later, Modern Life is War Witness. <laughs> yeah. yes, you will. i mean i don't i don't really know what it, there is to say i'll you know this is i think i put in there like this is like the next era of like american nightmare and bane like modern life is war i think was poised to be like that band and i think this record still holds that like that that uh that championship belt for that that year uh, yeah it's my it's my number two uh, yeah, I mean, it's a perfect record, I think. And it's still, it's, yeah, still perfect. It's number 11 for yeah. me. It could not beat Red Sparrows, okay, guys? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's definitely a record that I'd be like, yeah, I do, do I really need two instrumental uh, adjacent metalish bands on my list? Probably not. But that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Witness, I still know every word to that record. And it still goes as hard as it did then. Uh, Dead Ramones is undeniably just the hottest song of all time. So, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, um, do we all do number four? I did my number four, yeah. So you can do your number three, Jeremy. Or did, no, sorry. Joey, did you do Joey. Did you? Yeah, you did your number four. So, Joey, what's your number three? This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Trust me in saying that therapy is an incredible tool for as you are traveling through life because who you are as a person, you know, five or 10 years ago is maybe a completely different version of yourself because we run into challenges, whether it's work, whether it's life stuff, relationships, all of those things you can work through with a therapist. And that is why I love BetterHelp and what they do. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and then you get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Ray to get 10% off your first month. That's Better H E L P dot com slash ray dip in give therapy a try and become a better person do you like online casinos maybe you feel like if you've played one you've played them all that may be true until now welcome to play star online casino where you are the star of the show i'll be your personal concierge guiding you to the games you love to play we have the best slot games around, like Cleopatra and Starburst, plus live blackjack, roulette, and so much more. To get started, sign up for an account, and we'll match your first deposit with up to $500 bonus and 500 free spins. And as your personal concierge, you can count on me to bring you tailored promotions, special offers, and exclusive rewards that you won't find anywhere else. So sign up for an account, and we'll take care of the rest. Head on over to PlayStar.com now and experience the most unique online casino in New Jersey at PlayStar.com. Terms and conditions apply. You must be 21 or older within the state of New Jersey to play. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. This year at Ashley's anniversary sale, we were able to secure a more affordable price on the same great quality as before. And we're passing those savings on to you. Shop new, lower prices on hundreds of items throughout the store and online. Get ready for summer with 10% off on all outdoor furniture. Plus, we're offering five years special financing with no minimum purchase. Visit your local Ashley store or ashley.com to celebrate and save today. Only at Ashley. See store or ashley.com for details. My number three is Curl Up and Die, The One Above All, The End of All, That Is. Or, yeah. That was my number three on the hardcore list, but I didn't include it because I was like, it's an EP. Does that count right now? I don't know. But yeah, it's... I agree. I broke my... I, I, I put that... Oh, wait, no. That's the full No, that's the full Yeah, yeah. That was the that's last LP. That's... All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then I've... 
I wasn't thinking. Yeah, it's a great. I mean, that's a very good, very very good record. This record is like. I feel like I mean I feel like Cole and I was kind of always underappreciated, and I feel like you know they broke up shortly after this record came out, and I feel like if this record were come out today, like it would just be, I feel like it could be a monster. It's still so good and so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I, I have this as number 29 on my list and I think I, wow. act, no, I know, but I, I, I totally remember this because I was like, okay, like clearly curl up and die is like in my back pocket. Like they're some of my favorite humans and favorite musicians. And I was like, I, I can't show them favoritism on this list. <laughs> like, like that legitimately mattered whatsoever. So it's like, yeah, I, I'm like, oh, I'll put it 29. Yeah, yeah. it's oh. good, but it's it's not. It's not Red Sparrows, all right, guys. <laughs> so stupid. It's I'm, like I'm that. Surprised. Yeah, I was surprised it still hasn't got a vinyl press. That's kind I, of a bummer. I wonder why that harassed Vic before she left Rev all the time yeah it's not for lack of trying that's for sure <laughs> and, and she'd be like you can just license it it's like well how, no. would, I, how would i give you 10 percent of the pressing <laughs> yeah. uh, so I, I mean i feel like i last and then i recently mentioned to adam and i think he ignored it so yeah i mean if it's open out you know whenever shows happen again if they keep playing shows or put out new music then i feel like it only makes sense i mean do it on record store day. Like Rev's gone through most of the catalog. Yeah. They're really, like they, 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 they can't, they can't do, yeah, they can't do spark markers. So they'll probably do curl up and die before spark marker. <laughs> but yeah, I completely agree that this should be on vinyl and it's makes me mad that it's not. Especially because the art is obviously so cool and vibrant and they could do a lot of fun stuff with it. Not like they'll do die cut or something like that, but they could easily do something fun with it. Yeah. Yeah. Number three to uh, whoever, Joey. Uh, Ray. This, I listen to this record, still holds up. No problem putting this at number three. Dredge, Catch Without Arms. My number two. Such a good record, dude. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's funny is I had... Number five, Andy. Yeah, go ahead. I hadn't listened to this record in a very long time, and I, on my Instagram, all of my LPs, I... Just got through the D's and listened to this record. It was probably about a week week or two ago. And uh, I put it on, listened to it once, and I was like, that was great. I ended up listening to it like five or six times that day. Like it's, it's a it is addicting. Like that that I think that's the best way to describe it. And then I mean, but my, like in here I mentioned El Celio, like kind of like is what turned me on to the band, and like this is the record that well. I don't think I care about any other record besides this one today. Like Agreed. this is the, the only one for me. I agree. The, first, the one before was really good. Yeah. But this one is so, so unbelievably good. Yeah. I love, I, I, and I remember being able to actually like see them. Cause I mean, I think I only saw them on, on, once on LCLO, but then, you know, they started to tour like, you know, them and code seven went out or whatever. And like, they just started to tour with bands that are obviously in, you know, our, our ecosystem. And then, they did a yeah. circa code seven tour. Yeah, dude. It's so good. But yeah. And, then, and I, they, were, they played the Roxy once and they put, uh, they had like a bunch of like trees on stage. I don't, I assume I went with one of you, but yeah, I know. I remember that. Yeah. I, and I also think that the, they, this record probably yeah. could have come out in the past you know, two years and no one would have batted an eye. No one, everyone yeah. would have been like, oh yeah, this is really good. Way to go. So that's my number three. Jeremy, what's your number three? They, um... Uh-oh, I think we lost him. Dredge would always play, like, the local new metal shows on, on for so long. Like, they would always play with, like, System of a Down and, like, the Apex Theory and Alien Ant Farm and bands like that. Well, that was like my whole thing with like, I always wrote them off as like some just new metal band. Yeah. Some LA. Yeah. Yep. Totally. The shows they played. And it's like, then you listen, you're like, oh, this couldn't be further from new metal. Maybe like, you know, like Incubus, like maybe their first record is, you know, pretty, pretty new, but. Yeah. Yeah. They got unfairly lumped in with that just because they were trying to play shows in LA. 
Yeah, well, that was like their 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 team, you know, like that's who they would always play. That was just like the local scene at the time. Um, yeah. Yep, for sure. Yeah. So what's your what's very your, very different? What's your number three, Jeremy? Uh, my number three was what is my number one in my indie rock list. Uh, which keep in mind, this is above Bright Eyes and Kevin Devine. Uh, Decibully, Sing Out America, wow. which I do think is a good record. It's a good record. I do think. Everything is a good record, but do I listen to it anywhere as much as I listen to those other ones? Absolutely not. <laughs> no, that's definitely a big swing on that one, especially in context. Yeah, of, in, I, in I, context I, of today. <laughs> uh, yeah, like um, I think that. I think that I was just such a champion for that band that I felt like I just needed to do something really extreme for them by give them this spot. <laughs> so you, you loved the band. Uh, you were the reason I have City of Festivals. Yeah, it's. I mean, this record is so good. It's so so good. But um, and I'm, it was like me and Vic that rode rode really hard for them, right, Joey? Oh yeah, Vic and the, Milwaukee, the Milwaukee connection. Yeah, for Vic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cause, it, cause I think you maybe came with me to see them because I think they played with like the elected and the honor honorary title at the Troubadour. In the, yeah. in the most 2005 show of all time. Yeah, that, that is like that is the most of the era show of all time. But say, yeah, that, say like, say anything a, opening up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they were already yeah. been too big for that. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a, a definite of the era show, no doubt. Um, but yeah, so that's my number three. You can do your number. Uh, you can do your number two. Uh, my number two was Modern Life is War Witness. Oh, that's right. That's right. So, yeah. and so, I, I did my number two, which was Death Cab for Cutie Plans. So what was? And I, did, I, and I did my number two, which was Dredge Catch Without Arms. There we go. Oh. So then, uh, number number one. So record. should I do my number one? Let's do it. All right. My number one is Cursed, too. Not on my list. Not even on my top 25. <laughs> it not, nope, same. What? What? I don't know why. Did I not think it came out that year? What's wrong with me? Yeah, it came out that year, right? Yeah. I mean, I'll have to, I'll have to check my receipts on that, but I, I don't see why you would put that on there and you would be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's 2005. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Uh, that. Yeah. That, that's my. That was my my number one record in hardcore and number and number two is Witness. So it's like those are the two most important records to me in aggressive music, and I would probably put them in my two most important records in aggressive music of all time, like top five for sure. So the fact that they both came out in the same year, probably not that far apart from one another, um, was insane. And I remember when both those bands broke up, like in the same year, not much later, I was ready to throw in the towel on aggressive music in general. I was like, that's it. Like what's left? Nothing else matters. I don't give a fuck about anything else. Like those it's are the done. two best bands. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that like legit, yeah. that legitimately depresses me that I look at my list of top 30 records and it's not on there. Like just a, whoa, that hurts. That hurts my soul. <laughs> the fact that like, three records that would absolutely make my top 10 today aren't there. And two of them aren't even on my top 25. Right. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. We, we, yeah. we, uh, we made a few mistakes guys. <laughs> you know, when I, was eight, when I was 18 years old in 2005, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I was, I was 17. So it's even funnier than that. Well, I would have had to have been twelve. <laughs> you started early, dude. It was it was basically it was between Cursed Two or uh, Static X Wisconsin Death Trip. Yeah, it was it was either of those. Um, well, shit. What's uh, did anyone else say the number one? I think one of you did, right? One's thrice, which we already talked about. Okay, right, right, right. right. My, so, my, Ray, what's yours? My number one is. <laughs> following a very, very similar trajectory to Pelican and Red Sparrows, is the Yesu LP, the self-titled LP. <laughs> so, I mean, I still listen to this record, and I love Justin Broderick, and I worship at his altar from 
everything that he has done. Uh, so I'm proud to have that record as number one. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the theme between Pelican, Red Sparrows, and Yesu, I probably could have diversified my list a little bit more, but that was, that was who I was in 2005. Uh, very uh, interested yeah. in, in dreamscapes and uh, long songs. And um, I think it was an eight song full length. That was probably 52 minutes or something like that. But um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I love it still. I, I listen to it. And the EP that came after it, like the silver EP, just awesome. I actually went, I remember this, I went to Amoeba to get his autograph. Like, that's how much I like, I, I legitimately, I, that was probably the last time I got an autograph from a person. Like, I've, I don't think I've got, and that was 2007 or something. I don't know. It was a while ago, but love him. Uh, could did either, did either of you do a, uh, did either of you do a, a worst albums of 20, uh, 2005? I never fought, I never fought along with you guys on that. <laughs> the only thing I have listed as worst, I have worst band. And again, I feel like probably third year in a row, Hawthorne Heights. <laughs> Wait, worst band Hawthorne Heights in 2005? Yeah. <laughs> I about this band, the fact that they have a gold record hurts me on the inside. <laughs> well, yeah. little, little did uh, you know they're still around, Joey. <laughs> I know. I know you know. <laughs> what do you got, yeah, Jerry? Got, you got some heat? Oh, my God. Oh, I got some heat. Yeah. I got a uh, number one, Avenged Sevenfold, Bat Country. <laughs> uh, number two, there was like a tribute to Sublime. Um, number, th- number, number three from autumn to ashes, abandon your friends. Uh, number four, the bled found in the flood. Uh, oh, wow. Number five, it, number five, it dies today. That caitiff choir or whatever. Cat of choir. Uh, num- number six, love, hate hero. Remember that? Um, <laughs> wow. Dude, take it, take it, yeah. po- taking pot shots at, at sea level bands on ferret. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, number seven, some MySpace music comp for some reason. Um, wow. And it's apparently it had. I don't. I don't have any recollection. It says MySpace put out a compilation that has Tila Tequila and Against Me on the same track list. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, so uh, number eight, Bury Your Dead, uh, the record Alive. Uh, number nine. A premonitions of war benum split i had to have been scraping at the bottom of the barrel there um and then, then number 10 anything that would be considered reggaeton <laughs> how's that for an era Th- that uh, was that was when joey and i were loosely affiliated with putting out reggaeton <laughs> and, and he was never seen again <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my gosh can i can i, have, I go over a couple a couple ex- like deeper cuts on my list that yeah i think is pretty hilarious uh, number 25 at Paulson at all cost. 23, 23 for me. I, I legitimately, yeah. I legitimately texted the singer to be like, Hey, well, I'm talking about 2005. And I listened, <laughs> I listened to this record. Still really good, dude. <laughs> uh, number 24, mind you, Alkaline Trio Crimson, not on my list. Curse 2, not on my list. But story yeah. of the year in the wake of determination, number 24. Dude. Yeah, daddy. What? That is so, that is really bad, Joey. It's super embarrassing. <laughs> like, the most embarrassing. Uh, my future, <laughs> my future brother-in-law, uh, Mind Eraser, uh, Cave at number 23. Respect. That, that was my number nine in hardcore. That was my number nine in hardcore. Boys Night Out, Trainwreck, 21. Ooh, Black, it's a good record. I mean, I, 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 like a few, so, I like a few songs on it. I don't know about the record as a whole for me. Yeah. Dude, the yeah. goat alone, the only blood between us. I got that on okay. there. Great record. I think that oh, Ringworm Justice replaced by Revenge. What a record. Jack's mannequin, everything in transit. Stand by it. Ooh. Stand by the at number twelve. How hard, great... hard pass, dude. Do you have, do you have uh, a mental planet mental on there? Because I do. No, and I <laughs> like. I forgot. What am I? What am I doing, man? I don't know, man. I yeah. definitely. I definitely have uh, I have ice girls. Okay, that's I, I, I guess that's good. I have Coldplay X and Y. Have you guys heard of that band? <laughs> <laughs> They're number fifteen on my list, but not Curse Two, obviously. Oh jeez. Oh. Uh, there's there's some good ones in my honorable mentions, uh, and then some of the era of my honorable mentions, like Copeland in Motion. It's a good record. Totally. Uh, uh, Lucero, Nobody's Darlings. Um, do you remember the band 
the Holy Shroud. Remember that band? Oh yeah, yeah, you yeah. Band? Yeah, yeah. It sounded like uh, at the drive-in in Casino Out. Level, um, level, plane, level put it plane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and here, this is the most of the era. As cities burn, son, I love you at your darkest, or whatever that record was. Yep. Still, Did you ever listen to that one? Still, yes. Yep. It's still a popular band. That yeah, band yeah. for me. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It was kind of like the meeting ground between me without you, Norma Jean, and like a little bit of Under Oath. I think, kind of. I think that's fair to say. I would agree. I, I had a uh, my best shows of two thousand five, Carry On reunions, Trial reunion, Waxwing last shows. Lifetime in 108. I think that was in Philly. Uh, wow. Kid Dynamite at CB's. It's a good year. That is a good year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Joey, I gave you, uh, I gave the Generations comp that, that made number 30 on my list. Great comp. It's a very good comp. I, pro- I feel like I didn't put it on because I, uh, I, had, I worked on it and it couldn't make my list. That, that was probably my curl up and die logic. Oh, I, it, it's going to make the <laughs> list, but I can't show my friend's favoritism. I also, I, I also find this funny. Uh, this was even a record that came out. The buy a thread demos I had is number twenty eight. It's like that's not fair. You can't do that. <laughs> um, I'm gonna I'm gonna add one more hilarious bad bad thing that I did on this list. So I also have a top ten seven inches of two thousand five, um, and I, I'm gonna leave everyone with this last little piece of insanity. Are you ready for this? Please. Okay, my number uh, for I just want to give some context. My number seven is the Hot Cross Holy Shroud split. Number six is Killing the Dream. I rewrote it, seven inch. Number five is Breathe the Resist, Full of Tongue, seven inch. All three great seven inches, right? Let me tell you what my number four is. What beat those? <laughs> the the Hate Beak Caninus split. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> the band that was a parrot, a parrot singing and a dog singing somehow <laughs> in my brain was better than breather resist. <laughs> what is the matter with me? Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> that's the thing I've ever seen. I, I, yeah, I like I like how you didn't you, you're not like, OK, you know what? This is going to make my list at number 10 as a joke. Like, I mean, I like it, but it's a joke and it's not going to actually beat yeah. like legitimate music. <laughs> yeah. It be legitimate music. That's the worst take that I've ever had. It's the dumbest thing I've ever done. Um, yeah. Number wow. three was the breathe was a breathe in seven inch. Number two was the danger seven inch, and number one was ruiners. What could possibly go right? That seven inch is hot. But, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's okay because I put static lullaby as number sixteen on my list. Fossil Latino. <laughs> So, so time to be alive and i yeah well i, I think i, I think we a, i think we did this very well guys yeah this is a good learning lesson on uh, uh bad choices yeah. well this also to, to haunt you. right to be fair this is the farthest that we have gone back with these lists so you yeah. know like whatever this we're talking about 15 years old so you know our we, we can't always be right guys no, no, but it's okay. Yeah. It, yeah, but hopefully this will serve as a warning to people, but then also serve as a reminder that there are some great records that you should listen to in 2020 that still hold up 15 years later. Exactly, <laughs> totally true. And uh, do your best to not include animal singing things that are just straight novelties in any lists ever. Yeah, J- joke seven inches. You know they, they they don't really have a long shelf life. <laughs> yeah that's true that's true well thanks guys we did it i i I appreciate you uh logging into your myspaces and finding them on scraps of paper in your uh basement or wherever (laughs) okay that was such a fun discussion and hopefully you can revisit some of those records that you might not have listened to uh, maybe in the first place or might not have listened to for, you know, 10 plus years. I always enjoy doing that and being like, oh, yes, that record is actually very good. So next week we have a, another great discussion, and this one is with a old friend who, uh, you know, frankly is uh, sort of media shy. <laughs> and I mean that is a very deliberate choice of his. 
And uh, I was able to uh, convince him to have a fun chat on this uh, very podcast. Dan Sanshaw from Equal Vision Records. Uh, I was very excited to have him on. Uh, he's only done a few podcasts out there. And uh, yeah, it just I, I consider him a friend. And we actually have a very interesting uh, collision of the, on meeting and sort of business experiences, all that fun stuff. So that's what we got next week. And until then, please be safe, everybody. This year at Ashley's anniversary sale, we were able to secure a more affordable price on the same great quality as before. And we're passing those savings on to you. Shop new, lower prices on hundreds of items throughout the store and online. Get ready for summer with 10% off on all outdoor furniture. Plus, we're offering five years special financing with no minimum purchase. Visit your local Ashley store or ashley.com to celebrate and save today. Only at Ashley. See store or ashley.com for details. Liz and I are always ready for anything. And we did everything on our first carnival vacation. Like catching views from the ropes course. And laying out by the beach cabanas at Amber Cove. Oh, and those mesmerizing drinks at the fortune teller bar. That girl's trip was one for the books. And it's all because we chose fun. Together. Together. Book a cruise with your friends starting from $2.99 at Carnival.com. Carnival. Choose fun. Together. <laughs> Cruises are in U.S. dollars per person, double occupancy. Taxes, fees, and port expenses additional. Restrictions apply. Full details on Carnival.com. Ships Registry, Bahamas, Panama. If you've been injured in an accident that's not your fault and you don't have an attorney, listen up. We have legal professionals standing by to answer your questions and tell you how much your case is potentially worth. Call 800-709-7610 and get a free legal consultation. That's 800-709-7610. Call now for a free legal consultation. Attorney advertisement by LHP Law Group may not be available in all states.